This is the departure and approach standards for VMFA 251 Avengers. I would like to thank the 476 Virtual Fighter Group for making these charts. There's a link in the description below for their content. I want to make certain that this video in no way, shape, or form qualifies anyone to fly real-world instrument departures and approaches. The information in this video is just a glimpse of instrument flying and should be used as a reference for flying in the virtual world of DCS. As I am starting the Hornet, I will go over the departure plate created for Aldafra. The departure plate is broken down into two parts, graphic and text. The graphic will give you a visual aid on what to expect on your outbound departure. You will want to verify that you're using the right departure for the right airport. This can be located at the top and bottom of the chart. The text portion will give you directions of the graphic. Think of this as a storyline for the image above. On the graphic portion you will find a list of frequencies that you may use throughout the departure of this flight. Also on the graphic portion you will normally find a Vortac or TACAN station to help aid with navigation. The station will have the frequency listed and Morse code identifier to help confirm that you're tuned to the right station. A very important aspect of the graphic is the MSA. The MSA is the minimum safe altitude for this chart. As we can see, the MSA will have a Vortac or TACAN station in the center with an established distance from the station. In this circle, we can see from the 090 inbound radio clockwise to the inbound 360 radio has a safe altitude of 2400 feet. This graphic can be confusing at first, so let's break this down. On a compass face, looking down on the station, clockwise from 270 to 180, the minimum safe altitude is 2400 feet. And clockwise from 180 to 270, the minimum safe altitude is 1700 feet. This means for any reason that you're off course, you need to ensure that you're flying at least the minimum altitude in that sector of the circle as there could be a potential hazard to your flight. Request refueling. Request rearming. From this point on in the video I'll be referencing Vortac and Tacan as the same. Hence I'll doff for Tacan. For those that are flying 2102 and 2103 with the Security Avengers, complete. we'll be using the runway 31 right departure for Aldafra via the Gulpa transition, but we'll be using 31 left for departure. Unlike commercial Flight aircraft, control. the DCS Hornet does not have a GPS database of waypoints, so in looking at the departure plate, we have no onboard reference for location of AIM-110. To alleviate this, the Avengers will continue to use the 7DME from Aldafra TACAM. This departure plate has three transitions, Gulpa to the north, Hotel to the west, and Naboon to the south. For 2102 and 2103, the waypoints we use take us out to the north, so as stated before, we'll be using the Gulpa transition. In the real world, this will be followed with our flight plan, but we only have Aldafra Tower, and they'll be happy to file this for us. When requesting clearance to taxi, you will give the tower your intentions for departure, it should be something similar to this. Aldoffer Tower, Avenger 1-1. Request taxi from the Citadel to the West Army Pad for 3-1 left departure via the Gulpo transition with information uniform. Okay, we now know what it's covered on the departure plate. How does this apply to us at this moment? Before we start, we want to verify we have the current weather. This includes correct altimeter setting. As we're flying in controlled airspace and today we cannot see outside the airplane, it's very important that we remain on our assigned altitude, speed, and heading. We do not want to endanger or kill other virtual pilots. For Avenger flights on the JTF server, we can get the current weather on 119.6. If we're not on the JTF server, we can sneak outside the airplane and get our current altitude and set the altimeter to match. For 2103, the altimeter setting will be 3002. In field 1 1, request startup. In field 1 1, clear for startup, wind 240, at 6 meters per second. In field 
We have established that we are taking the runway 31 right departure via Gulpa, but what does that mean to us? Once we're on runway 31 left, we will climb at 7 degrees nose up, maintain 230 knots or below, and also maintain runway heading of 306. Once we're at 7 DME from Aldafra Takan, we'll turn left to 240 to intercept the 285 radial from Aldafra. Once we're on course at 285, we will maintain course until we get to 13 DME. At 13 DME, this will put us at AIM 100. We need to ensure that we're at 10,000 feet or below when we pass this point. Once we pass AIM 100, we will still maintain course heading at 285, and we'll climb up to 13,000 or above in order to reach Gulpa, which is at 32 DME. How did I get those distances, altitudes, speeds, and headings? This information is written on the graphic along the route. Our heading from departure is 306. We can see a 230K with a line over it. This means we need to be at 230 knots or below. Next, there's a box with a 13 in it. These boxes depict distances from TACAN stations. This is the tricky part. I said left turn to 240. That is not on the graphic. But in order to intercept the 285 radial, we need to set a course that will get us there as quickly as possible. Nice, easy intercept courses are normally completed with a 45 degree entry. AIM 100 is 13 DME from Adafra, but we need to be at 10,000 or below when we get there. Again, similar to the speed restriction, we see that we cannot be above 10,000 feet at this point. When we get to Gulpa, we see that we need to be at 13,000 feet or above and the text at the bottom of the plate just confirms what we saw on the graphic. Before we get going, let's check some settings in the cockpit. I want to verify that my altimeter is set to 3002. Now I'm going to set my radar altimeter to 550 feet. I'll discuss this later. Let's set our course for our TACAN. We want a course heading of 285. And verify it on the bottom right of your DDI that you put in 285. Let's set our lights. Let's go over our radar setup. I recommend a 6 bar 40 degree that way we can see directly in front of us up and down on the vertical axis as quick as possible. 20 miles is fine for the range. Alpha Tower, Venture 1-1, one, one, holding short, runway 31 left. We're waiting on our clearance to depart. We'll go ahead and set the last bit of our switches. This mission has strong left to right winds, so we need to ensure that we're using proper rudder on our departure. 
Also, since we're lightly loaded, we'll just increase power to mill power on our departure. This will also help us get to 230 knots and not overspeed, as according to our departure plate of 230 knots will blow. Make sure you make good use of the autopilot. It definitely helps when you're trying to look up approach plates or departure plates. As we can see, the 285 radial just swept past us, but we're still right maintaining runway heading at 230 knots. Okay, we are one mile from our seven mile DME. All right, left turn, two four zero with thirty degree bank. Here comes 240, start to roll out. Again, maintain 230 knots and 7 degrees nose up. Our needle's coming down. Right, it's on the bubble there. Let's go ahead and turn right to intercept 285 radial. And we're out of the clouds. There's the 285, roll wings level. At this point for Avenger flights, we can call VFR on top and request to resume own navigation. On top for tower, Avenger 1-1. VFR on top, request to resume own navigation. This gets us on a course quicker if air traffic allows. For those that are doing 2102 and 2103, at this point we'll just go ahead and go to waypoint 3. I'm going to skip the video until we get to waypoint 5. At that point we'll discuss holding patterns and the approach plate for runway 31 left at Adafra. Welcome back. 
Let's go over the approach plate for the VOR, DME, runway 31 left, at Odafra. The approach plate is broken down into three sections. The top section covers communication, notes, and missed approach. This will cover the important frequencies used to complete this approach, but will also give notes of changing conditions that will impact certain aspects of this approach. For example, if the approach lighting system, ALS, is broken, the minimum visibility requirement is adjusted for a greater distance for all categories. The most important part of this section is the missed approach text. If for whatever reason that you cannot make out part of the runway and land, you must follow these instructions in order to either set up for another attempt at landing or land at your alternate airport. The graphic in the middle of the plate is similar to the departure plate that we discussed earlier. In fact, most of the symbology remains the same for the altitude, speed, and headings. Again, this section will have the minimum safe altitude circle that we discussed earlier with the departure plate. Finally, the bottom section is the final approach profile. This will give you the minimum safe altitude that you can fly and the visibility requirement. This is broken down into five categories. These categories reference your approach speed. The DCS Hornet falls into category C for most of the time. Category C covers the approach speeds of 121 knots to 141 knots. And then we have the overview graphic of the airfield and the direction of flight to the runway. On this plate, we should see runway 31 left to our left. The VOR DME for runway 31 left has three entry points. These points are labeled with the acronym IAF, Initial Approach Fix. We have Fix North, Fix West, and Fix South. If there was a fixed east, it would probably interfere with Abu Dhabi international traffic to the northeast of Aldafra. So all east traffic of Aldafra will have to transition to fixed north or fixed south. For those completing 2102 and 2103, you will have to complete one hold during your approach to Aldafra. 2102. You will have to enter a hold at fixed north for one lap and continue to fly the 20 DME arc until the 319 radial. I'll demonstrate this approach in this video. 2103. You will get vectors from the instructor pilot to Aldafra. You will have to report when you're 5 nautical miles from Aldafra. Then the instructor pilot will give you another vector to enter fixed south. You will fly one lap around the holding pattern, then continue on the 20 DME arc to the 319 radial. Avenger SOP dictates that we fly the 20 DME arc at 230 knots indicated. Let's quickly go over standard rate turns. A standard rate turn is a 3 degree per second turn in which a 360 degree turn would take 2 minutes to complete. It is very important keeping within your assigned airspace. In a Hornet, a 30 degree bank will place us on a standard rate turn. You can confirm this with your standby attitude indicator or the ADI page on the DDI. All major course changes will be made with a standard rate turn. Okay, let's start our approach. For this approach, we need to know where to go in order to get to Fixed North. Pull up the F-10 map. From the approach plate, we know that Fixed North is on the 20 DME arc on the 271 radial. Let's measure this and drop a point. We have been circling Palm Jabali and we will use this point to get a heading to Fix North. We can see that we need to turn to 219 in order to get to Fix North. This heading does not take into account wind. Please keep that in mind. So we'll continue our turn to 220 to make things simple. Once we are wings level, you will want to confirm your heading with Fix North. Now that we're established on our heading, Avenger SOP is to intercept the 20 DME arc prior to Fix North. This will make entry to the holding pattern a little easier and less confusing for us. Don't worry, I'll cover how to enter the pattern in a little bit. So we're going to measure new heading at 225 and fly that inbound to Aldafra. Since we're inbound to Aldafra, we need to let them know of our intentions and check weather for the airfield. Similar to the carrier, we want to establish contact around 50 nautical miles. 
The radio call will be similar to this. I'd offer Tower Avenger 1 1. We are inbound at 120 for 50. Angels 2 1. Request the VOR DME runway 3 1 left. Approach via fixed north with information uniform. Let's set up some items in the cockpit and also verify some others. Let's set our lights. Set our attack end channel. Ensure we set the correct radio. And verify in the bottom right of the DDI that we have set the course to 271. Ensure our altimeter is still set to 3002. Verify we set our radar altimeter warning to 550 feet. The approach plate's minimum altitude is given in MSL. We need to adjust for the elevation for our radar altimeter. The runway threshold has an elevation of 52 feet. If we add 52 plus 550, we get 600 feet. We're close enough because I can't dial in 548 feet exactly. Do you remember the wind? Let's check to see if heading 225 is still working for us. Well, it looks good, so we'll continue. At 30 miles from Aldafra, you want to begin your descent. Nose down 5 degrees and reduce throttle to maintain 250 knots in the box. While we're doing this, I'll discuss how to enter the holding pattern for 2102 and 2103. Entering an instrument approach can be a little complicated at first. So this SOP will help alleviate this. The Avengers will enter an instrument holding pattern either perpendicular or to the signed radio. For 2102, the Avengers will enter a holding pattern at 90 degrees to the 271 radio on the 20 DME arc. Looking at the diagram, we should be north of fixed north on the 20 DME, heading 180 to intercept the 271 radio. Once you see the radio pass the center of your plane, wait 30 seconds then turn right to 271. We wait 30 seconds because that is the time it takes to complete 90 degrees of turn in a standard rate turn. Once wings roll level, wait one minute for the outbound leg. After one minute, turn right to 180 and intercept the 271 radio inbound for Aldafra. In a no-wind condition, you should be fairly close to the radio when wings roll level. At 22 DME, you will leave the holding pattern and turn right to 180. By the time you roll wings level, you should be close to the 20 DME arc. For 2103, the Avengers will enter the holding pattern while established on the 181 radial outbound from the Aldoff attack end. At 20 DME, you will turn left to 135 to join the outbound leg of the holding pattern. After you roll wings level, wait 45 seconds then turn right to 181. Again, once wings are level, wait one minute, then turn right to intercept the 181 radial inbound for Aldafra. At 22 DME, you will leave the holding pattern and turn right 090. By the time you roll wings level, you should be close to the 20 DME arc. Here are my recommendations for the rest of this flight. You want to set the HSI scale to 20. 90 degrees off your left wing is roughly between the M and O for the text mode. Use the MSL altitude alerts to set up your stepped altitudes. As we're descending to 5,000 feet, my altitude alert is set for 5,000 feet. Once in the hold, I will reset to 4,000 feet. When I am on the 20 DME arc, I will set my alert to 3,000 feet. Once I'm on the 319 radial, I'll stop setting alerts as you'll spend a lot of time trying to maintain course, altitude, and speed. This is why we set the radar altimeter warning early on for our final decision altitude. Use the autopilot and auto throttles. It helps reduce the workload in instrument flying. I stop using both when I'm flying my final leg as I get a better feel for the airplane on my final. From this point on, I'm going to compress the video until I get to some talking points. When I get there, I'll zoom normal speed.
We are getting close to the 20 DME arc at about 19 miles. I'm going to go ahead and start turning inbound to help intercept that 20 DME arc. The winds for this mission are as follows. Uh, 6,600 feet, it's 285 for 20 knots. At 33 feet, it's 240 at 10 knots. So I'm estimating at 5,000 feet, the winds are at 263 at 18 knots. Okay, I'm beginning my left turn. Remember, standard rate turn, so 30 degrees of bank. As you roll out on 200, I notice that I'm not close to my 20 DME arc. I'm off by 0.7. So to help correct this, I'm going to stay 200 until I pass the 271 radial. The radial is starting to move in. At this point, we'll wait our 30 seconds, and then we're going to turn right to 271. Turning right to 271. And we'll wait our one minute here. If you do have high cross ones, I recommend you cage your HUD. That way it's easy to track the VOR and tack in as it comes through. When you break out of the clouds, definitely uncage it so you can put your velocity vector on the runway. At this point, I'm resetting my altitude alert to 4000. Now we're turning back for the inbound radio. As we cross 360, we should see that that tack end radio should be near the center circle, letting us know we lined up right. But because I know there's a lot of wind on this mission, more than likely that needle's going to be just above that first circle. There's 360, and when we roll out, we notice that we'll be just right of that needle. So we'll be just south of the 271 radio.
I'm going to roll out early so I can re-intercept that 271 radial. Once we get back to establish to it, I'll go ahead and come back in another 5 degrees to see if we maintain that, that hold. We're now in the center. I'm going to make a correction to 8-7 come back level and see if that holds us. At 22.5 I'm going to turn right to 180 to help get on the 20 DME arc. At this point you want to make your radio call to Aldoffer Tower and let them know you're leaving your hold. At this point we can also descend down to 4,000 feet and we'll reduce our throttle to 230 in the box. On the 20 DME arc, 230 knots in the box is the Avenger standard. We're at 20.3 for our DME arc. We're going to make a 10 degree correction to 170, then recheck it. We're going to set our last radial, which is 319 for the inbound to runway 31 left Aldafra. As we're making our corrections within reference to the distance for the tack in, you don't have to always use 10 degrees. If you're way off, you can come back in 20 degrees, but just keep checking that distance. Again, I'm going to time compress the video so we don't have to sit here and watch this long 20 DME arc. This is to show you that we just passed the fixed south point of the 20 DME arc.
Alright, the needle is now moving back in for us. Because I know the wind is from behind me, I'm going to turn a little bit earlier on this to see if I can intercept that 319 radio. There's a 319 radial as we're passing through it. The wind is definitely stronger than I thought, so I'm going to keep this turn and see if I can reestablish that needle. Also, since I'm somewhat close to my radial, I'm going to go ahead and descend down to 3,000 feet while still maintaining 230 knots in the box. Also, like I said before, I'm going to disable the auto throttle and autopilot on this final leg. When making a correction for flying needles, you want to make small corrections. When you're back on your course, you want to half that correction. So for instance, if I turned right to 320, when I finally get back on needle, I'm going to turn back left to 315 and see if that correction helps. And we're good to level out at 3,000 feet. Remember our next marker is going to be 14.1 DME. At that point, we can descend down to 2,000 feet. Also at 14.1, it is optional if you drop your first set of flaps. Our next waypoint is 7.8. At that point, we'll drop full flaps and gear. From this point, your airspeed is going to depend on your AOA. For those that are curious, I flew this mission about four times first two times I completely messed up on the headings. And the second two times it was April Fools and I got ejected the first time and my landing gear wouldn't come down. We broke out of the clouds, and we have the runway in sight. We want to contact tower, let them know that we are on short final for one way three one left, and let's go ahead and uncage our HUD. Dr. Tower Avenger one one, short.
short final for runway 31 left. There's our radar altimeter at 600 feet. As you can see, we have quite a bit of wind here. Kicking a little bit rudder. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. Please let me know what you think in the comments below.